MySQL. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody running that on the Windows box? Windows box? Linux boxes with MySQL? Anybody? All right. Thank you. Oh, my name is Dennis, and we're going to talk about um, basically turning some of your skills into a consulting business, if, if some of you are interested in that. So we're going to cover quite a bit of ground, so let's jump right into it, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, first off, I want to start with a disclaimer. I am neither a lawyer nor an accountant, and I'm not here to give you any sort of specific advice regarding uh, those, uh, those parts of starting a business. Um, feel free to ask me questions afterwards. I can speak from experience, but again, I, um, anything contained in these slides, I am not a lawyer nor an accountant. Um, as far as what I've been doing for the past two years, I've been running my own consulting business, um, basically doing web application, database development, um, and also a bit of writing. Um, so basically, what I, what I have here and put together here is based on my experiences um, as far as the steps I took, some of the pitfalls I had, and um, also some of the rules of thumb that I've seen develop. So first thing we're going to talk about is you know, why we want to do consulting in the first place. Um, next, as far as keeping it all legal, what we need to do with taxes and, and the business organization and things along those lines. Then we're going to talk about um, when you start out, what are you going to need? What are the steps you need to take? And then your first 100 days as far as what, what uh, steps are involved, how do you find clients, things along those lines. A step after that is how do you keep those clients happy? Um, as a consultant, as an independent consultant, you're going to live and die by your client list, so it's very important to keep that client list strong. Next, we're going to talk about other things you can do to help your business, help yourself. Um, I'm going to share with you some keys to success that I've found in the past two years. I'm going to share some resources with you, and then I'd rather just open it up to the floor for any questions you may have, and also questions for afterwards if you see me walking around and whatnot. So jumping right in, why should we consider consulting in the first place? I, I, I would imagine that most of the people in here are employed now, so why should we even consider this? Um, part of the reason I think that you should be interested in this is, is demand, quite frankly. Um, it's no secret that mainstream media is constantly reporting on security breaches and uh, viruses and whatnot. So there really is a strong demand for your skills right, as, a, as a security specialist. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have a client on my roster that hasn't at one time asked me for some sort of recommendation for a security expert because companies would really rather hire a consultant than face the media embarrassment and the costs involved with having a break-in and whatnot. So companies are willing to spend on security, and that's something though, that, that it's your opportunity to capitalize on that. Next is be your own boss, and that pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, get the chance to work at home, uh, set your own hours. And just because you want to be your own boss doesn't mean you have to run a dot-com. Um, there's many, many independent consultants like myself um, working along with dot-coms um, and other companies that aren't necessarily internet-based. Um, and being very successful at it. So there's, there's uh, opportunities there. Uh, next benefit I find is, is your tax rates. Um, being a self-employed individual is one of the best ways to lower your taxes as far as I know. And all the deductions you get, uh, any computers you buy, network equipment, those are all tax write-offs in the end. You get yourself a good accountant and they can help you with that as far as um, identifying what parts of your home you use and what parts of your own assets you use can really lower your tax rates. Consulting is also a really good way to expand your skill set. Um, clients will demand different things of you and in different uh, time schedules, which you will have to keep. And I think you'll find that uh, when you're working by yourself, you'll develop a motivation to expand your skill set and um, hopefully improve yourself as, as well as help your clients along. And finally, one of the benefits of uh, consulting and really being self-employed is you can follow other pursuits. I'm sure some of you here have other interests that go beyond computers and whatnot, or perhaps specific computer interests. Uh, for me, that's uh, other pursuits I've taken up is writing. I've um, worked with Rocks a little bit, helping co-authoring books, and also speaking at conferences like this. This is something that I enjoy. Um, and naturally, you will find pursuits 
um, as you have more free time for yourself that you will want to pursue. So the first thing we should talk about is um, keeping it all legal as far as what paperwork and documents you're going to need. And actually, um, uh, you should take note that these steps are in order. Um, you will need, for example, you'll need to set up your tax information before you go ahead and get your business name. So as I go through these, keep in mind that this is actually a step-by-step -step list. Um, after making the decision to go out on your own, you need, to, you need to go ahead and establish your company, and you need to mentally figure out how you're going to do that. Um, are you going to have employees, or are you going to work by yourself? Um, is, there, is there a coworker or a friend you're going to go in partners with? That's, that's also important. Um, and also, are you going to incorporate? Are you going to become a corporation? Or are you going to keep it as a, as a cell phone company? Um, there's different liability issues involved in that. Um, that's something that you need to decide. Um, next is taxes. Taxes, main thing you need is what's known as a federal employee ID number, uh, also known as FEIN. Basically, it's a social security number for companies. It's a way that the IRS uses to track um, companies and the taxes owed and whatnot. Um, after that, you need, to, you need to investigate your city. Find out if your city charges taxes on companies. Some cities tax companies, others don't. That's something you can find out from your local city hall. Licensing, also something related to your city hall. Um, you need to establish your business name and register your business name um, with the proper offices. Um, some, in some cases, again, depending on the city you live in, you'll need to be licensed. You'll need to have special permits. Um, if you're running it out, out of your home, you may not have to have as many permits. It really depends on your city. Um, as, when I start talking about taxes in the IRS and licensing, I know it may sound a little complex, um, but as far as the IRS forms, you can literally do it over the phone. Um, you fill out the form, you keep it in front of you, you call up an 800 number in Philadelphia, Ten minutes later, you have a federal employee ID, so it's really not, a, not an involved process. As far as your business name and licenses, it's just a matter of spending a morning at City Hall. You go down there on a Monday, you go to the information desk, and they can guide you through. And really, within a day's worth of work, you can take care of your taxes and your licensing. It's, it's really quite simple, even though you do have to deal with forms and whatnot. Uh, next, you have your bank accounts. Bank accounts have you know have a variety of options. Um, you can go with your just your local bank. Um, as long as you have your federal employee ID number, that's really all you're going to need. Um, nowadays, there's also um, bro brokerage offices offering business accounts that have different interest rates and whatnot. Um, that's something that you can investigate on your own, but really your local bank will do just fine. As long as you have something that's separate from your own personal accounts, um, that'll really help you in the end for tax season. And finally, the last thing you need to take, up, take care of is insurance. Um, some states uh, have legislation in the works that would require consultants to be insured. Um, if I remember right, California is one of them. Um, other states don't really care. So it really all depends on where you live and, and the laws in your area. As far as starting out, there's a couple of things that um, perhaps you should consider. What's your current employment like? Um, in many cases, your current employer can make a great first client, depending on how vital you are to their operations and how your relationship is with them. Also, your finances and your current lifestyle. Um, some of you in here may have car payments, others are not. Um, if you live with your parents or share, share living expenses, that could certainly help. Um, you really need to take into account as far as what your, your monthly expenses are and how your savings and whatnot to help you along with that. Insurance, and by insurance I mean health insurance at this point, when you leave your employer, you also leave your benefits unfortunately, so benefits are something you need to provide for yourself. Um, health insurance can run, can run you anywhere from 50 bucks a month to $200 a month, um, but either way it's something that's vital and you should have. And there's other factors as far as your own personal relationships. Um, I had a friend in Connecticut who was about to start his own consulting business and then found out he was going through a divorce. Probably not the best time to start a consulting business. Um, so it really all depends on your own personal situation and, um, and your finances and how you want to go about it. Next, you need to see if you need a lawyer or an accountant. Personally, I think you can do it, with, you can do it without either one of those. Obviously, it can also help you to have a second hand there, have a lawyer look over your, over your forms and whatnot, but you can do it on your own. That's a, that's a personal decision. Some people just feel more comfortable working with a lawyer or an accountant. 
And then finally, you're going to have investors. Um, that, that really all depends on how, on how involved you want to get with your business. If you're going to have your own storefront where clients are going to come in or you're going to work out of your home, there's quite a difference there in what funding you're going to need. Question. Yeah. I have a friend of mine. He, uh, he uh, started his own business. Yes. What he did, he worked out with a lawyer and a company. He said that was a good way to meet people because they have other clients. Um, was to trade services, to do a service for them and write them a check and do a service back to them. And he said that he was able to do a service for them and write them a check and do a service back to them. Uh, for those that didn't catch that, um, his comment was regarding um, getting a lawyer and accountant. It is possible sometimes to trade services, um, your services for theirs, um, and there are some tax benefits involved in that. And I'll get into that just a little bit with networking and your clients and whatnot, but that, that's a good point. Um, leading up from the discussion on investors is, is your workspace. Um, again, are you going to have office space? If you're going to have a partner, you're going to have maybe three or four people working for you, yeah, you should look into it. If you're going to start on your own, be, uh, just have it a sole proprietorship, you could probably do it out of, out of your home or an extra bedroom or whatnot. You're also going to need just general supplies as far as notepads and pens and pencils, things like that. And then, of course, all your equipment. You're going to need your computers, any extra phones and phone lines you're going to need. And in miscellaneous things, maybe you need to upgrade your internet connection, things along those lines. Again, these are all tax write-offs, so maybe a big expense to begin with, but there are benefits towards the end. Your total startup time is going to be affected by your decisions. Um, if you're going in with a partner and you need to wait for, their, for your partner to find a good stopping point to leave his current job, that's going to affect it. Um, if you're on your own, you could probably start it by yourself overnight. Um, as far as how I did it, how I went about it, um, just to give you an example, um, I came out of college, I worked for a company for three months, completely hated it, and I quit. Next day, I figured I had a, a bit of savings, had extra phone line, upgraded to a cable modem, and, and, get, and got a website going. Um, and we'll talk about establishing a presence, but for, for myself, this total startup time was about a week's worth of work of dealing with paperwork and whatnot, um, about a $1,500 investment in equipment and computers and things along those lines. And literally within a week, um, I was to a point where I could start looking for clients and whatnot. And again, that, that can be as short as a couple days or it could be a couple months for you depending on um, you know, your savings and how you, how you want to go about it. As far as the first 100 days, question. That's a good question. His question uh, was if uh, the startup phase can be done uh, as you're finishing up your job in a part-time basis. Um, that's possible, but you will have to take some time off during business hours to, again, go to your city hall and take care of that kind of paperwork. But sure, it's definitely possible. Um, go ahead and do that on the weekends and during your other free time. Yeah, definitely, definitely not impossible. Please. All right, this question was regarding um, security companies in, in speci specifically, is that right? Um, where uh, starting it in your home or as opposed to a storefront. Um, I, I really couldn't imagine a situation where th there'd be a, a, a big difference. Um, perhaps in the storefront it might be easier to get the extra phone lines and, and connections you're going to need as opposed to a residential area because of, because of the, uh, wiring your city. Um, but otherwise I, I couldn't think of a reason why, why they make a difference. Well, the question was more generally to um, getting clients, if you know any clients more willing to accept a smaller firm based out of a No, I, I don't think that would make a difference. Um, most of the time, you'll be requested to travel to the client side as opposed to the reverse. So it's not like you'll have to entertain clients in your home very often. Um, but um, 
for security purposes, I think they understand that there's a there's a inherent need to be offsite, um, and I really don't think it, it would make a difference, at least to the clients I've come across, that would uh you know base their decision on that. Please. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that, actually, that'll depend on a client by client basis. Um, some clients will hand you a 20 page NDA, other clients will hand you a one page NDA, and others won't, don't really care. Uh, so it really depends. On, uh, and I, I handle that personally. I just, on a client by client basis, during the startup phase, when you're pitching your client, They'll make sure to tell you what their requirements are, um, but really, it's it's um, it, it varies quite a bit. Please. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last part. Right. Um, I definitely don't disagree with your points. Um, I did go about it with an accountant, um, but others can choose not to. It, it really depends. Um, as far as the other points of liability and, and uh, whatnot, um, again, I, I really think that depends on, on a client by client basis. Um, it certainly doesn't hurt to talk about that, and it depends on the documentation they give you. Um, Sure, sure. Sure. have a hard time presenting an NDA to a client. Um, it usually doesn't work that way because they, they, they obviously have um, more consultants than probably you do clients and they have a very standardized process of how they go out with their NDAs. Um, so, I'm sorry? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part. But I think they'll say no a lot more than they'll say yes. I, I... Okay, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll try to repeat repeat his his comments. Is there... Okay, to repeat, um, his comments are regarding a uh, non-disclosure agreement, an NDA, um, and he's advocating per perhaps coming up with your own non-disclosure agreement and presenting it to your client as opposed to them presenting you with their uh, non-disclosure agreement. Um, 
his, his points are valid and it is worth trying, but I, I d would disagree with that personally. Um, it, it's cer certainly, it depends also on what t type of clients you will target. Um, I agree with you that lar larger clients are probably going to turn you down a lot more than the smaller clients. Um, at the same time, with the smaller clients, um, perhaps it'll, it, they've never had an NDA agreement before. That's very common. Or um, in some cases, they'll shy away from that. It, really, it depends on how small of a client. Um, some people still like to do business with a handshake. M maybe not the best way, but it does happen. Please. What was going on. Again, the, just to recap, the question in the back was regarding um, NDAs as far as who's protecting whom. Um, are they requesting more protection um, from non-competes and whatnot? Or are you requesting protection that they won't disclose your methods and whatnot? Um, as far as presenting your client with an NDA that protects your operations and your um, methods for, for or and whatnot, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I would have to disagree. I think that if you present your clients with an, with an NDA, with with those involved, um, you will probably lose more clients than you will than you will get in the end. Um, also, most NDAs, um, as far as what the client will present to you, the most important part, um, and again, addressing the question in the back, is probably on the non-competes. Um, Non-competes are common in an NDA where they will ask you to not compete with their competitors um, or subsidiaries of their competitors and whatnot, or even in, in some cases their clients. Um, and commonly, it's, a, it's a, usually a year's worth of time where you can't directly work with them. Um, that's probably the most important part for you as a consultant. Um, but again, I would, I would have to disagree that presenting your client with an NDA is, is probably a deal killer more than it is a deal maker. Please. The, yeah, but um, unfortunately, demand doesn't imply an exclusive market. Um, they, you know, any contract that you have, when the, when the client's going to put an RFP out there, there's certainly going to be more than your bid. Um, and, th and in that negotiating process, um, that's something that they will look at, and again, I think it, it would probably cost you more clients than it would gain you. Yes, we have. Okay. Uh, let me let me get the question in the back. The gentleman's been very patient. Please. Perhaps we can discuss this afterwards. I'll definitely be around, and I'm sure other attendants will be around. Can I, uh, I'd just like to run through the rest of it. I think we're running really, really short on time. Sorry to interrupt you like that, but let's go, let's go ahead. Um, 
your presence, pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Phone, you want to have a dedicated business line, your website. Um, again, your website can really serve as your storefront nowadays. Um, and it doesn't have to be that fancy. Who you are, what your experience has been like, and what you're looking for. Initially, you won't have a client list, but once you do, you will want to put it up there. Your client list will sell you more times than anything else you will ever do. Um, and then, of course, search engine registration. Register yourself with, um, with the engines out there, and also there's a lot of consultant directory, uh, consulting directories out there that you want to register yourself with. Business cards, probably one of your best form of advertising. Uh, the only advertising I did when I first started out was I just handed out my business cards like crazy. You call up old friends in college, you let people know, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm on my own now. This is what I can offer for your company. Call me if you need something. Um, and really, in some cases, that can, that can be the only type, type of promotion you're going to have to do. Um, other forms of promotion, a lot of options. Yeah, you can start off with a big bang and buy, and buy a full page ad in a local tech journal or something along those lines. Or again, you can just uh, do it by word of mouth, handing your business cards out, coming to conferences like this. It's really up to you. Um, either way, I th again, I, I think you'll see enough demand out there where you'll at least generate some interest just by letting people, just by letting people know that you're on your own and this is what you can offer. As far as keeping clients happy, uh, definitely don't overpromise. Um, try to stay within your boundaries of your skill set. Uh, I think you'll find that they'll appreciate that more than you just saying, you know what, I can't, I can't offer that service for you. Uh, that will probably keep them a lot more happy. Um, and definitely don't underperform. Uh, it's always beneficial to set up specs as far as um, what your client expects from you. Um, and you make sure that you meet those to the T. Um, usually when I give my clients specs of what I'm going to return to them, I, I do it in bullet point format. That way you can really um, lay it out and say, hey, look, this is what I'm promising you and this is what, what, what the finished product does. So our business is complete. Uh, be available. I can't tell you how many times I've won contracts just because a client is fed up of not being able to get their consultant on the phone. Um, you know, get a cell phone and return your calls. That's something that's very simple will really go a long way. Uh, deadlines. Deadlines are very important. Your client will make other deadlines based on the deadlines you give them. If you can't meet it, tell them, hey, look, you know what, we're a week out. I'm not going to make next week's deadline. Um, the communication there is a lot more important than um, you know, showing up and not having a, a finished product. Um, finally, network for your client. Um, I think you'll find that big clients will come to you and, um, and outsource projects intentionally just based on the fact that by outsourcing to you, you can get them in contact with other clients and whatnot. Um, I've had clients come to me and ask me to, to work on a project for them just because they want an introduction to another client I have. Um, it, that's just the way business is done. So you'll find that just by being willing to network for your client, you will get other contracts in the end. Um, billing. Ask your client if they want a project or an hourly rate. Very important um, and also very important to your bottom line. Invoicing, be diligent. Have your policies. I personally invoice on the 1st and the 15th of the month. You may want to do it monthly. You may want to do it weekly. Either way, let your client know. Unfortunately, one of the parts of, of consulting is you won't always get paid. You have to write off. You have to sue clients. That's, that's a, unfortunately a way, a way to do business. Um, but it never hurts to be nice. Hey, listen, you know that invoice I sent you last week? You know, could, you, could you check up on it? It was a net 10 terms, and it's due tomorrow. It never hurts to just give a call and find out what's going on. Meet your client's needs as far as um, try to anticipate their needs and um, what they have now. If they're looking at starting um, certain services or certain websites, do a little bit of research on their part. Find out what's coming down the road as far as technology-wise and what they can use. And then finally, client maintenance. Um, if you don't know how to golf, start taking lessons now. Um, <laughs> if, you know, cl clients will expect for you to take them out to dinner. You know, gifts at Christmas time and whatnot never hurts, and it's part of it's part of doing business. An invitation for a round of golf on Friday. Common ways of doing business. Um, as far as other things you can do as a consultant, network. Um, places like this are a perfect part for it. Listservs, news groups. Um, get out there and just let people constantly know what you're doing. Uh, it, things like this can lead to new contracts, potential partners, uh, new employees, or even new subcontractors. There's other people just like you doing, doing consultant, consulting that can do other things you can't. Form, form alliances. Use their skills. Bid on contracts together. This is how you build up your business and start bidding on bigger contracts. You also need to maintain and expand your skill set. 
Um, times change, and the skills that you have now aren't necessarily going to be in demand five years from now, so you need to make sure that you keep yourself relevant. And uh, follow your other pursuits. You know, get, if you have other interests, follow them. That's, the, that's one of the benefits of being self-employed. Um, really quickly, some keys to success. Keep your discipline. Being self-employed doesn't mean you, can, you, you don't have to work. Um, nobody, nobody pays you for sitting around. And um, you'll very quickly find there's a difference between working hours and billable hours. Um, so it does require quite a bit of discipline. Um, again, keep your clients happy. Communicate with them. Let, them. let them know you're available for them. Maybe you don't always return calls the same day, but let them know, hey, I return my calls within 24 hours. And most clients are at least want to know when they can expect a call back. Always look for an opportunity for yourself and for your clients. Um, new technologies, new companies out there, new potential partners. Always keep an eye out. Um, rules of thumb. When I first started out, one of the best pieces of, um, well, when I first started out, I spoke with other consultants. Best piece of advice I ever got was set your rate and never, ever change it. Companies who tell you they, pay, they won't pay your rate are lying to you. Um, and you will have Fortune 100 companies tell you, oh, your rate's too high. Keep your rate, set it, work with your client on payment options, but make sure you never let anybody tell you your rate is too high. Invoice payments, again, you'll never, you won't always get paid. Um, research your client ahead of time, it helps. Uh, you'll have to sue clients eventually, and unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Um, and finally, it always seems harder than what it is. Don't, don't let the information overwhelm you. Uh, again, when you start talking about taxes and IRS, it starts to get a little up there, but it's really not that bad. Uh, some resources for you, um, realrates.com. That's a very important site. Basically, it's a consultant site where um, consultants go in and they report their latest contracts and what they're getting paid. It helps you set your market rate, and, let, and it helps you go to your client and say, hey, look, I researched this. There's five other consulting companies charging this rate. This is my rate. A very important site. IRS, I think it's a, a very helpful site. A lot of their documents are downloadable in PDFs. Um, it saves you trips to the library and whatnot. And finally, Small Business Administration, the SBA. Uh, a lot of good resources out there for business plans, uh, financing, and just general advice. Um, excellent website. Definitely recommend it if you were thinking of uh, starting out your own, on your own. Uh, summary, I'll skip over because I know we're running short. And um, again, just as the last point, it's really easier than you think. Don't let it overwhelm you. Um, you, you can't do this. It's, it's not rocket science. It just takes a little time. So I appreciate you, appreciate you coming. Thank you.